recently I've been sharing a word to watch our natural sun that the heavens are going to give us signs. 19th Psalm This heavens declare the handiwork of God. So I believe that that there's several signs in the heavens right now. Two days ago our sun had sunspots in it. They were stronger than it's been in decades, it said. The planets and the suns and all of these cannot be manipulated by the devil or anybody else. God the Father spoke them into existence. He'll stay in obedience to his orbit. So you don't have to worry about this earth being blown up by no comment because the Father's in charge of it. He's put it all into his plan. But the heavens do declare his handiwork. And I was told this because I'd been bringing Isaiah 22, 22. Every 11 years our sun erupts in great sunspot activity. But ever 22 years, it's the double. And I believe that we're in the time of the double. And the double is not like uh, one and one makes two. The double with God is one. And another person in agreement with it is ten. So I think we're getting ready for an explosion of the this glory of the sun down here like we've never seen before there's been other times that I had spoke about the sun one time I was up in Black Mountain with uh, with a bunch of youth and Lou Ingalls I told them to watch the sun that the sun was going to give them a sign Two days later, the sun erupted. And let me see, what is that abortion pill? 482 or 4? Whatever that abortion pill is. <laughs> 485 or something like that. The sun is quartered off in sections. And it erupted in that section. And I believe that was saying... Uh, I don't remember exactly how many years back it was four or five I believe that son was saying I'm going to bring a judgment in America because of abortion well I believe that the father's doing just that you know judgment many times is your last mercy so I think he's trying to wake us up in the United States so that he can show us his last mercy uh, the sun in the Old Testament in the time of Zechariah stood still which is impossible but it did there was another sign in the sun in 19 and 17 the children of Fatima in Portugal. The sun actually zigzagged and came down. The children prophesied that it would come on a certain date, on October the 13th. And on that morning, it was raining really strong. Everything was wet. And they said from 30,000 to 100,000 people had gathered in that field because the children had been accurate twice before. And uh, it was, I guess, wet right up to the moment that it, the children said it would happen at noon. Well, at noon it cleared off, and the sun come down and instantly dried up all the ground and all their clothes and everything else. So our sun has given us signs. And I'm not saying that I understand everything, because it's just happened a couple of days ago. 
but the Son is giving us a sign. I have no idea how long it's been, but they said decades, so ten times ten times ten. I have no idea how many go it back. But our Son is speaking to us. He's speaking to us how the devil. And it's Isaiah 22, 22. It's speaking of a great change in the body of Christ. We're in a major change. It, it like him. It's going to replace Shebna. Shebna was like the leader and the treasure. And he was building his own kingdom. He's even uh, wanted a... a a mausoleum he had him a grave dug in the hill and everything else he had great plans and he's using his wealth for his own purpose uh, what he didn't know is he would never need that tomb so Elakim means father of the remnant I think I'm speaking to remnant today So, the keys of the kingdom. I haven't got the Shepherd Rod book out yet, but I will have it out probably by the first of December. I'm only going to share the first thing that he spoke to me on the Day of Atonement this year. The kingdom of God is coming. He didn't say make way for the kingdom to come. He said, no, get out of the way of it. The kingdom of God is coming. This is a year to soar. There's been people that's been trained in the body of Christ, like a natural pilot on an airline been trained. These sky pilots' job this year is to take their their people up to new heights to soar. This is here you must cast off all restraints. So these keys of David they hung on a peg and uh, Ezra uh, nine eight. It was like a nail in a sure place or a peg. When they built the old temple, they built these pegs into the temple. When you remove the peg, the temple fell. So it's not only a coming down of the old system and the old temple. It's really building a brand new temple of his body. And... Uh, what hung on these pegs? The keys that hung on these pegs were the vessels. The vessels that was going to be used with the Holy Spirit. You are the vessels. Each and every one of you have gifts. It's time that just one or two gifts quit being revealed and the body be revealed the gifts in every one of you of 1 Peter 4.10 if you say you don't have any gifts you know what you're really saying you're saying I'm not saved for the word there says that every born again Christian the second they were saved were imparted with gifts And so, all these gifts hang on these pegs. The real fathers are going to unlock the gifts that's been imprisoned in you by a religious spirit all these years. He's going to unlock you, the real fathers that he's bringing up. You have a lot of teachers, you have not many fathers. But the real fathers, the real sky pilots are going to turn loose their sons and their daughters 
and the gifts in you to where the body will have the need. Every one of you have got a different gift. You all come together, we got the whole shebang. So we need for your gifts, and they, they've been imprisoned by religious spirit. Oh, by legalism, opinion, debate, judgment, and criticism. These are the five things religion is. What God is after now is his system. These five things replace apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Now we're going to need the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. And while we're on this subject of the anointing, I do have a mantle. It was given to me uh, by the Lord. Two. And that's what it is. It's the calling, not the mantle you need. I hope that's clear to you. Because you need the calling. You need to answer the calling. You'll get a like mantle of mine. But it's got to come from the Lord himself to you by the Holy Spirit. So don't seek another's mantle. We only need one of that kind. You only need one of me. We need one of you. We need all of you coming together. Many are called, but few are chosen. So it's only when you answer the calling. I think every born-again Christian has the calling. And few are chosen. If you answer the calling then you're going to answer it in the furnace of afflictions in Isaiah 48.10. And if you hang into that furnace, then you're answering the calling. You'll also be chosen. So I'm not saying that when you answer that calling, usually it's just like the opposite happens to you. The testing, the trials, uh, the persecution uh, continually trying you in that furnace. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had an experience in the furnace. When you answer the calling, you're going to have an experience in the furnace with that fourth man. And I think you determine your own destiny by your faithfulness. So when you're faithful and hang in there, you're going to come out of the desert sooner or later. And I think I'm talking to some now that if the kingdom is coming, then you're coming out of the desert, you're coming into the promises of God. So I believe our son is really declaring a truth. I think our son is declaring the coming of the son. So, the gifts have always been in the body of Christ because of the DNA is what you're made out of your clothes, your flesh, everything else we're made out of earth, that's DNA but there's one thing in you that's not made out of earth it's genetics you who are born by a God sperm seed 1 Peter 1.23 then you were born out of the loins of the Father, just as Jesus come from the loins of the Father, and all of his genetics was in that one little bitty God sperm seed. So are these same genetics in each and every one of you. And what we need is for these genetics to come forth in you, into maturity. So the Lord was, I think, trying to tell us that. And he said, the works that I do, you'll do greater. For the Lord did all of these works by obedience, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit inside, but totally obey it. But he went and made it possible for us to have the Holy Spirit without measure. He went to the Father, and the Father gave him a gift, and he immediately gave it to the body of Christ, you. And those gifts in you, by the Holy Spirit, was to break your genetics into maturity.
These genetics, by the way, are coming to where they're going to live a lot longer. Because I believe that we're in a time of the gifts who are going to begin to break the curses of early death. And you'll be young at 100 if you die. But I also believe these genetics are going to come to a younger race. They will never know death. These genetics that formed in him, he made an eye out of mud, out of DNA clay again. Well, if he said you were going to do greater works, what are you going to do about arms and legs? I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen to those that will mature enough to the point to where they've matured their one article in their mouth to a place that they only bless. I believe the maturity that he's looking for in us is that our tongue would speak blessings. There is a thing that our tongue can curse, like cancer, all of these plagues and viruses. You can cancer, you can curse that. I think it was 2002, there was influenza really bad in the Carolinas. It was bad in the whole United States and Canada. And people were dying all over, and I had a vision of the Lord. <coughs> and he was really angry at us. And I asked him, why are you angry? And he said, the people are asking me to pull back this influenza. I can't because I've given them authority. They're not doing what I've called them to do. If you go to Morning Star Conference, it's brand, it was New Year's Eve, and rebuke the people and tell especially the full-time ministers to get up on their feet and repent. Then tell them to curse that influenza. Well, Rick and all of us, we get up that day, we cursed influenza. That morning, all I could hear about was the hospital wings are full, the, you can't get in, the plague is not even wretched height yet. And it is getting more and more devastating. People dying of their own fluid in their lungs. The babies drowning in their own fluid. So we repented. And then we cursed influenza. I never heard of another case that year in the United States or Canada. Do you think the Lord gave us a token or was he saying, do this? I don't think it was no token. I think he was saying, this is what you're called to do. I've given you the authority, now take it. And a religious spirit would hold you back. But I'm telling you, a spirit of grace and mercy can take you forth. You can check these things. That influence had died instantly all over the United States and Canada. This is the kind of authority he's looking for. The keys of David have got. So I believe one of the reasons that we don't have any more authority than we do is because we use our tongue wrong. You really need to watch your conversation. You should keep your conversation right. If your conversation is in a restaurant or any place, even in a bar, it's all right to get loud if your conversation's right. Because those that get offended at it is one that's going to need it the most. And they're going to be listening to it if they get offended. So your conversation, keep it right. Your expression. should be I just love him so I just love him I just express him he, he is love you know everybody in the whole world is looking for something and they're trying to 
called lust, love, and they're trying to. There's such confusion going on. But if you're just your conversation is and your expression is, he's just love. I just love him so. Conversation, expression, and presentation. I want to present Jesus properly. Jesus is love. Jesus is healing. Jesus is life. If we can mature in these three things, with this little rudder up here, we'll quit running churches aground and destroying them. But we'll start building the church of Jesus Christ, the temple of the Lord. By the way, I saw the last day temple. It wasn't square. It was round. Made out of living stones. You know, a round building, the strongest hurricane can come and it'll stand. A square building, the wind catches it and blows it apart. But a round building, nothing can take it down. And that's what he's calling for. It is time that Ephesians 2.20 comes in. Foundation, apostles and prophets. So that Ephesians 2.21 can become a temple of his body. For Ephesians 2.22, so that Papa can cohabitate with us in the spirit. So what is this spiritual kingdom? It's within each and every one of us. And our daddy wants to set up shop here, not here. So, the keys of the kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. Our father is a spiritual, is spirit. And those that's going to worship him are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we're going to need this emptied out. These keys he's talking about are the keys of David. They will bring forth the tabernacle of David in Amos 9.11. The tabernacle of David had breaches in it because men the glory of God abided in it and men took that glory to themselves uh, when they were bringing the, the, the ark in to Jerusalem he used to reach out to touch it when it looked like the ox had stumbled and the ark was going to fall he reached out in his human strength to touch it and it killed him but it made a breach now Larry Randolph's got the best teaching on that I've heard God was tired of being in a box and he wanted that box to fall out where he could get out. And I believe that's what he wants. He wants to get out of that box into his people. So I believe this is what's going on. I think he's tired of being boxed up. And he wants released in the kingdom is here within is getting ready to come if it does then your next by the way the tabernacle of David is 24-7 prayer praise and prophecy this is a word I brought in Kansas City in 83 there will be the tabernacle of David will be raised up again it's been promised it'll be Prayer, praise, and prophecy, three Ps. 24 hours a day. If that goes on about the uh, tabernacle of David, the David checked the scriptures to find out how that the tabernacle was to be brought in. He brought it in properly. He set it up in a tent. A tabernacle. But he ruled the flaps up. Every heathen in the world could drive, could go by that place and see God's glory. I believe that's what he wants now. 
that they can see God's glory. Wherever you go in the world, the, the, those in darkness can see the glory of God on you. If they can see the glory of God on you, then Amos 9.13 is going to take place. The plowman will overtake the reaper. There'll be an eternal harvest. There'll never be an end. That's what I come back for. I, I come back from death when I was 45 on August 8th of 75. I went to the Lord in death. He sent me back. I come back for harvest. I come back for one billion souls in my time. And I'm going to see it. I was made that promise if I'd come back. I was offered another, I was told another promise too, that I'd live to see the return of God's glory. The Lord removed His glory after the 50s because men were marketing His glory. This time, don't market it. Don't touch it. God don't need any help. He don't need your human strength. He needs your obedience. So I believe that what he's calling you to is the beginning of the greatest harvest of all time. Now, I will live to begin to see the, the coming of the billion. But he didn't tell me that was all. I mean, that's one wave. This is what I believe. This is what I think the change is all about is the return of his glory and a billion young people coming into the kingdom all at once. Amos 9.13 says a continual, continual harvest. A harvest that never ends. Through all eternity it'll be there. As long as the earth abides. So this is where I think we're in a time of tremendous change. And I think there's going to be all kind of signs in the heavens. All kind of signs in the earth. Earthquakes, volcanoes, shakings. Pestilence, famine. It's pestilence and famines and stuff. You know, you have the say over it. The redeemed have, has the say down here what's going to take place. I think things have been happening like this because we don't say. There are things that we really need to begin to speak to and say. The enemy means to bring calamity to the United States and Israel. The enemy means to bring calamity to the United States uh, in our borders. We ought to start saying so. The enemy, I believe, means to bring calamity and terrorism. I've been asking the people pray for that they be caught before they can activate this terrorism. And they are being caught. They found some tunnels underneath the border down in Mexico where the terrorists intended to bring anthrax in. I think it's a time that we wake up. So, we're in a key time of change. I believe that God is going to give us a government that He's already given us. And I think that He's waking mankind up. My Papa always wanted a family. In Deuteronomy 5, He spoke to all Israel. He wanted Israel as a family. And Israel told him, don't ever speak to us anymore. If we hear from God, we'll die. Well, they all had heard from God and they were still alive. So they said, Moses, you go up in here and we'll obey you. I believe that was the beginning of the Nicolaitan spirit, cocker of the laity. Our Papa wanted to talk to every one of us each individual and anoint each individual 
to glorify him and his son. Signs and wonders. You know who they glorify? Papa. Uh, John 14, 13, and John also the 16. Isn't it about time that we begin to glorify our daddy? Well, the gifts are in you. It's about time that we join together. And become united with one another. And, it, and if we haven't got anything good to say about one another, then keep our mouths shut. Because the problem is that we've been cursing one another and ourselves instead of blessing one another and ourselves. You should bless yourself. So... This is what I believe the change is. A change uh, that would change everything. I believe the church is getting ready to be birthed. And a church that will literally the Father will cohabitate with. So man is six things. And we've been taught that six is an evil number. But in Genesis, man was created on the sixth day. And God called him very good. Well, if God calls man very good then I think it's time that we begin to agree with him. So, man is mind, will, and emotions. He is spirit, or spirit, you've got a spirit man, or a conscience. You've got the Holy Spirit in you, and you've got the wisdom of all the ages in you. Have you any idea what would happen if you mature to the place of heaven, the wisdom of the ages in you, a thing that I've been sharing with people, the mind is your living room. Well, our mind has been like a landmine. Anybody step on us in any way, we blow up on them. We blow them apart. I think it's time that we change our landmine to a gold mine. Colossians 3 2. Settle your, settle your affection on things above, not things on this earth. You know what happens when you become a gold mine? The Holy Spirit can mine your gold mine and give people a nugget of life. You know what happens if you become a gold mine? The Holy Spirit can just give you a light impression in there. It would be a healing of cancer. A gold mine is a mind that the Holy Spirit could give an ideal to. It would bring this cold fusion that scientists are working on right now into being. It would totally change the energy of the world. If you don't know what cold fusion is, it just means separating water, hydrogen from oxygen. be the cheapest fuel you could possibly have. It would be nearly without expense, non-polluting. Heating to diabetes, arthritis, all of these diseases. The Father is looking for sons and daughters that he can talk to that have a gold mine. That's what he's calling you to be. Be a golden mind. It 
so that the wisdom of the ages can be imparted into you. I know that we're in a time that in about 2012 there's going to be understanding of time like never before. There was no time before man. Time was created for man. So there's going to be an understanding of the past, the present, and the future of time. We'll know what to prepare for. A gold mine is going to have the answer to every virus like influenza and all this other stuff. It will know exactly how to how to stop it. Uh, there's going to be fungus and plagues on our food supply. A gold mine is going to have the answer because it's got the mind of the Father. Adam had a gold mine before the sin. He named everything. I think we've been called to come back again to that place of a pure mind. They have uh, taught us that you can't hear from God, you can't see God. Well, it says in Scripture that the pure in spirit can see God. So we really need to clean out our living room and just write scriptures all over it. You can put a throne in the center of it, but it'll never get in it. If you do, then he'll visit you. But you see, he lives right down here in the kingdom within you. And this kingdom has got a plug right here that's kept it from blowing up like a volcano. Well, that plug's getting ready to blow out and blow the top of your head off. You're getting ready to lose your mind and get the mind of Christ. So the kingdom of God is really beginning to push, especially in the remnant. The mind here has kept this imprisoned. And therefore, we've tried to do religion with our mind and we have totally failed. Why don't we do it God's way and bring the, bring the ark in like David did the right way? Let's empty this out. I've always said, your mind be, show up, be empty-headed, be on time. I believe that's what he's saying again. But there is a need that you use this mind. Prayer is important to put it in your mind. Your mind knows how to pray. But the trouble of it is, is intercessors... Just keep praying without giving the Lord equal time. Look over what you're going to pray about. Get it all settled and then pray and then be quiet and hear what he'll say. In Habakkuk 2 1, he says, And now I'm going to wait to see what the Lord will speak within me. So once you've prayed a thing, you should wait and empty this out. And you can. And let him speak into your mind from here. When you do, you're out of the prison down here. And this becomes a tool that you use. So prayer goes up. You need that. You need to, you need to eat the word as often as you do your natural food. The Bible. You need it up here in your mind. And it will help you when you decide how to pray. And then your prayer goes up, and then the answer comes back down in your conscience, your spirit man. You're going to need the mind again to proclaim it. You don't pray again. You speak it into existence. This is what I believe that the heavens are saying. 
a time of change like never before. A change back to becoming sons and daughters. He wants sons and daughters. So our part in these things is to begin to change our mind. In the mind, I remember a few years back, I think it was about 10 years ago, on Hanukkah, I had a vision of the Lord. And I saw people bringing baskets of fruit to the Lord and laid them at His feet. And He thanked them. And I'm thinking, how can this be? They're bringing Jesus baskets of fruit and He received them. I didn't know that we could give Jesus a present. I'm going to read to you what He gave to me. find it. empty your mind so it can become a gold mine. Your will determines where you want to go. A long time ago I come to this conclusion. Lord, don't give me my way. Give me yours. Now, in your emotions is the only thing that you can give a gift to God in. The fruit of the Spirit is the only thing that you can give God. So you can give Him a present. The first thing I saw was a man and wife brought a basket of oranges They were huge oranges. They were beautiful. They were sun-kissed. And oranges, the color orange is the least color in nature. But the color of orange means love. So, love is the fruit of the Spirit you can give God. Love means He is our greatest pleasure, the sweet companionship of the Lord. Psalms twenty five fourteen. When you love Him and you love your brothers and sisters, you're giving God a present. And when love becomes your greatest pleasure, these other things that aren't important they fade away. The second thing I saw was a basket of peaches. They were really big, and they looked real juicy. And peaches are joy, sweet, a sense of well-being. I am a joy to the Lord. A sense of well-being. You should keep that feeling. I don't care what's going on. You're saved. You should... Don't let the enemy take your joy from you at that sense of well-being. I'm a joy to the Lord. I checked it out once. It really sort of means this. I'm the Lord's joy. He will strengthen me because I'm a joy to Him. So let that joy this within you. Uh, make sure you always keep it. The second basket was apples. 
which was peace, health, Peace means freedom from disturbing thoughts or emotion. I'm the apple of the Lord's eye. Freedom from disturbing thoughts or emotions. If you keep your joy and your peace, you're going to be successful down here. Again, we have the say. We have the will to determine which way it goes. The next one was the pear tree, patience. Enduring life without complaining, long life, bearing fruit even after 150 years. You know, Job bore fruit uh, uh, centuries. It went on down to his children, children, children. The peace in Job and, the, and that patience in Job went all the way down into his children. You know, a, a parent that is patient the children will see that and they'll be patient and patience you will you will receive if you're patient you will absolutely receive the fifth one was kindness was the tomato big hearted and very generous we want to be big hearted and very generous with one another the sixth one was strawberry goodness Goodness means excellent virtue, healing virtue. They are used in healing, small in their own eyes, and very sweet, very humble. The woman with the issue of blood touched the Lord, and goodness come out of her. When people touch you, does goodness come out of you? You know, we can respond both ways. When people have a need, the goodness come out of us. The seventh one was great faithfulness, loyalty, saying no to our options. We have a lot of options down here. We have a lot of things down here to worship. It's when we say no to them. Then we can give him that basket of grapes. The eighth one was gentleness. A banana. Soft-hearted, gentle, very sweet. Full of potassium. Big-hearted. A strength. The ninth one was self-control. The grapefruit. Having, most, having control over one's emotions. Very big, both sweet and sour. Sweet is staying focused on the Lord. Sour and keeping putting to death the old man. So we can really determine which way we're going. You know, all of you, you want a visitation? You know the Father sat down in heaven and so is his son. They want the visitation. See, the Holy Spirit's with you. And the main thing he wants to do in you is mature you enough to come into the presence of the Father and the Son. Literally, Come into the heaven. Every one of you that's born again can come into the heavenlies. This religion has kept you tied down and imprisoned. And this is year that the restraints are pulled off of you and that you go up. Colossians 1.13 delivered from this present darkness or this mind power into the presence of his light light is here when this rains darkness rains that word there metamorphosis or translated 
from darkness to light really means rapture. It's time that we get raptured from here to here. And that that which is had the well of salvation plugged up right here blows that cork out and let an upper vessel come that begins to touch the humanity on this earth for salvation. So each and every one of you can go up. In Ephesians 2 6, you're already seated with Christ in heavenly places. It's a done deal. But for the purposes of Ephesians 2 7, you know what purpose it is? So that you can be given the free grace to lead people to salvation. It's a time of free grace. You, every one of you have got enough free grace to lead anybody in the world to Jesus. And with that glory on you, they're going to come to where it's over and over. In Romans uh, 12, 2, it said, This metamorphosis has taken place here. This worm of just memory is, is coming down into your conscience and becoming a butterfly. And a butterfly takes its power from the sun. And I'm telling you, I believe I'm looking at butterflies that you're crawling out of that cocoon and crawling into the presence of the sun. And the sun is going to pump you the blood into your wings and you're going to unfold. And it's time you fly. And the purpose of the butterfly is for one thing, reproduction. One butterfly can reproduce thousands and thousands of times a year. And I believe it's time that, of reproduction. So the mind of Christ. So being an old Baptist, I believed in rapture. Now I understand it. But it is time that the body of Christ gets raptured and raptured into his presence. So at different times when you empty your mind, you can go into the heavenlies. It's your will. So I teach this. I like to teach children better than do some of the adults because they got to think it out. I think it's time that all of you go give your daddy a visit and your brother. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. I've laid the scripture. I've told you what's... And he wants you to come there where the winds, the angels are assigned to you there. He wants you to come into that glory to where you shine. Those that's been in the presence of God, they shine. They have an inner shining, that uh, an outer glow, as he did in Hebrews 1.3. He wants you to have an outer glow and when you come into darkness, that darkness will flee from light. It's time that the light in you makes darkness hide. So, this is how I encourage you to do it. That you don't pray. Don't use your mind. That you put your hands up, close your eyes, and take deep breaths. And just simply beam up. It's that easy. I mean, it is really easy. So you that want to go up, 
Why don't you close your eyes, put your hands up, take deep breaths, empty that mind, and just go up. Come, Holy Spirit. Take them up. Good. Good. Get that plug out. Yeah. Let that kingdom within come. Good. 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 Take your head sit. Keep that breath. Don't think. Good. Hallelujah. Good. Good. Now feel the wind on your face. Now when you come up there, all five of your senses become golden. Some of you will be seeing light. Some of you may hear a word. You may be seeing visions. Others may be smelling flowers and things like this. Others may taste something or oh, taste the Lord and see that He's good. But the greatest of all is feelings. <laughs> you and I think this is what He's really doing here. I want you to feel, feel the love. Feel that He loves you. That's it. For See your feelings. And that feeling of love and well-being is the greatest. It's got the peace and the joy in it. But you can see with all five senses, for see there they become golden instead of the carnal. Good. Good. The wind is really whipping on some of you. And uh, that feeling, see the wind blows away the fog and blows away the darkness so that light can enlighten you. Good. Good. Now each and every one of you, you ought to do this often. Empty the mind totally. And especially if you are restless and have lost your peace, this is how you get it back. This is your victory that overcomes the world. You're not in the world, you see, when you do this. You're in the heavenlies. You're touching the heavens. Yeah. It is. Just keep going. Now, you can do this anytime you choose. For you see, your daddy's door is open to you day and night. Hmm. Now, you see, true soaking is like this. Soak it in His presence in the heavenlies. All five of your senses, golden, sanctified, in His presence. Now, when you come back down, you're going to bring the Peru sauce with you. That's the presence. So you see, in Peter and James it's called the coming of the Lord, but it really means the presence. And it's the presence of Jesus in each and every one of you when you come back down. So bring his presence with you so that those that dwell in darkness down here and have no hope can find light, hope, and life forever.